Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's bright and early, daily discipline, mind, body, and soul. This is how we get through Sunday. You know what we're going to do. Study group for warriors. Let's jump right into it. My hardcore heads. Some of you guys just want to sleep. Go to sleep. Some of us are awake. Let's get into it. Talk a little bit about women today. Amongst other things. I got all kinds of notes. Here's a message to some of you weak men out there. And I've had to tell myself this. Every woman ain't your mama. You only have one mother, that's your mother. That's the woman you complain to if you have to complain to a woman. You call your mama and you say, Mom, you know, life is hard, or whatever it is you say. But you don't come at any other woman like that. You don't complain to women. If you want a really good woman to leave you, to cheat on you, to just walk out, to go find another man, then yeah, run your mouth about your problems. You have to remember, she's not your therapist. The relationship isn't meant for you to vent to her. It's not, that's not what it is. She may vent to you. She may need someone to tell her problems to. And a lot of women are like that. Men, you can't be like that. You don't use your woman as a therapist. If you need a therapist, you go find one. You go to a psychiatrist. You tell that psychiatrist, you go find Jordan Peterson or something and you tell him your problems. You do not tell your wife. You do not run your mouth about how weak you are. You need to be strong for her. This is a, a traditional aspect of masculinity that I think a lot of men have thrown out the window. A lot of men have turned into overly emotional, weak little babies and they think that women are meant for mommy stuff. Your woman ain't your mommy. If you need to vent, if you need to just get it all out, start your own YouTube channel. That's what half the people on YouTube are doing. But bottom line is men don't complain. Let's go to the next one. Highly competitive men get rich. You want to be rich? Learn how to be competitive. And learn to enjoy competition. A, a rich guy, I've heard this so many times before, and I don't understand it because I'm not rich. <laughs> but they don't look at profit really in the same way that I might. And I've owned many businesses. I've been self-employed for 30 years. If you want to start a business, I'm the guy you should talk to. Let's do a business plan. I can help you with that. I do coaching and mentoring. But you're going to have to be cutthroat. And really rich people, really successful people, they look at profit as points, like in a game, like in a video game. And the competition is really just to see who can get the most points, just for the sake of it, for the sake of the game. And it's different when you're looking at business as a game, that's a much different way to navigate. It's a much different outlook. You have so much more fun with it than if you're looking at it as life and death. So many people look, so many entrepreneurs look at business as life and death and they wake up every morning feeling like, like Braveheart, like this warrior that has to go fight the, this battle. No, learn the art of competition. This will help you in a lot of different ways. I, I was raised by weak hippies. And I found myself not being very naturally competitive growing up around my mother and a bunch of liberals. I've had to learn to be more competitive. So one way that you can be more competitive in a healthy way, because there's a douchebag way to be competitive, is to remember these three things about competition. Focus, balance, and commitment. Now, you may have heard that before. That's some Bruce Lee shit right there. That works for anything in life. If you want to be successful in anything in life, focus, balance, and commitment. And that's your competitive spirit. Let's move on to the next one. We're in tough times. Not everybody's going to make it. I suggest putting on the armor of God 
in these last days. You protect yourself from evil, from Satan's army that's invading on all fronts. And it is. If you really look around it and you get your philosopher's hat on, you realize evil is attacking on all fronts. So this is in part what the Mind, Body, and Soul program is about, to help train you into a warrior so you're ready. You're ready for the storm. But many of you may need to start a spiritual path. It's not too late. There may be a time when it's too late. But it's not too late yet. So you repent, you atone, you pray, and you give thanks. You do that every day. Let's move on to the next one. Let's talk about faith. What is faith? Is faith just obedience? I don't think it is. That would be blind faith. Blind faith is unhealthy. You're allowed to question. You're allowed to see. The idea of God to many people is just this invisible fantasy character who lives on a cloud. That's not how I look at God. Some people ask me, well, how do you know that God exists? And it's hard for me to explain to you, and it's something that I know. I don't just have a suspicion. I didn't just latch on to some belief system like you believed in the Easter Bunny or Santa Claus when you were a kid and then you grew out of it when you got smarter, realized how silly it is. No, I have evidence, but it's hard for me to show you. So how do you have faith? I was listening to a, a, a debate between two British intellectuals about this topic. And the one guy asked the other dude, the religious guy asked the atheist, how do you know that your wife loves you? Through faith, right? If I ask you, does your wife love you? And you say, yes. Well, how do you know? How do you know? And you might say, well, there's evidence. Well, what is that evidence? What kind of evidence? Show it to me. And you say, well, I can't really physically show you. I don't have it in my wallet or some definitive photo that just proves it. But there's a history. We've had a relationship. And there's been little signs and signals along the way, repeatedly. It's pretty darn obvious this chick loves me. So I know it. I know she loves me. And you might just know that your wife loves you. And I could doubt it and be like, ah, I don't know, bro. And you just look at me like I'm crazy. How dare you? This is the same thing with God. Let's move on to the next one. Some people don't get this stuff. Let's talk a little bit more about women. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus. It's kind of a funny section. They talk about women. And here's a, a little quote from Ecclesiasticus. I can't remember the exact page, but you find it. I would rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than keep house with a wicked woman. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I would rather dwell with a lion and a dragon. I'd rather live in the same room with a lion and a dragon. Not just a lion, because that would be awful. A lion would kill you. Oh, they're only cute on TV. I've been to Africa. It was on safari. Lions will kill you. They're big, giant, vicious, killing death machines. No remorse. Bite your head off and crush it, your head with its teeth. Eat your brains. Oh, those cute little lions. It, it's not enough just to be in a room with a lion. He'd, he'd rather be in a room with a lion and a dragon <laughs> than to be with that wicked bitch. Fuck that bitch. Here's another one from Ecclesiasticus, because Ecclesiasticus is funny. This is for all you simps. Oh, and I've been a simp. I was the king of the simps. The simpiest simp in simp town. Oh yeah, yes, I certainly was. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman. So I think that's pretty interesting stuff from the Bible. Men, you don't seek love from a woman. I know that sounds 
weird because that's the whole point of you being in a relationship, right? Is because you guys can have this mutual love. You need that love. But you might just be trying to make her your mommy. You may have mommy issues and were never loved by your mommy and you think that your wife is your mommy and you want that kind of love from your wife. And I've had interactions with weird couples where the guy will call his wife mother and the wife will call the husband daddy. That's it's weird. So a man, a man never seeks love from a woman. You don't seek love from your wife. It sounds so strange, doesn't it? A man seeks love from two things, two areas, and two areas only. All the love that you need comes from two areas only. You don't get it from your wife. You don't get it from your kids. You don't get it from your dog. Love comes from yourself, from within. Self-love. I talk about this. I coach and mentor this comes from yourself and it comes from God those two places and that's enough for any man if you need more than that you may need some therapy and you may need to understand I had to slap myself out of this sex isn't love I used to think sex was love I was a sex addict like legit I was addicted to sex I would fuck all the time one night stands or I was the one night stand king I fucked every single chick in this town Just trying to find love. Sex isn't love. So we talk about trying to be strong in the storm. And that's one of the reasons why we train why we train so hard and what the mind, body, and soul program is about is to get you ready for the challenges that are coming your way. And, and they're coming your way. Challenges are coming your way and you have to be ready for it. I mean, are you ready? Are you ready for everyone around you to turn on you? Are you ready for persecution? Are you ready for attacks? Are you ready for war? It's just a matter of when. It's going to happen. Things may be going great now, but storms are coming. So you don't look away when the challenges come. We have to face our challenges. However, there's a point when you may realize that this is too big for me and it takes a humble heart to say, okay, I can't meet this battle. I'm not ready yet. But what do you do in that case? You don't just put your hands in your pockets and walk off like some kind of loser. You go and you train. You go to the gym. You go to the church. You go to the grocery store and buy some good food. You go to your mountaintop and meditate. You train. And when you emerge from your training, you're ready for battle. You're ready to meet that, that fight. And you tell that obstacle oh I'll be back I'll be back motherfucker you just wait what do you do when you're angry a lot of guys just rage yell and scream rant vent if you feel like you need to vent and rant go start a YouTube channel when I'm angry what I do these days is I turn to God I can get pretty angry. I got anger issues. I got really angry the other day. I'm not going to get into what it was about. Doesn't matter anymore. But I was mad. Oh, I was mad. I was really mad. <laughs> like really, really, really mad. And when I get really mad, I turn into a monster. That monster comes out of its cage. I think about murder. Oh, I do. I don't know if many of you think about killing. I do. I've witnessed more than 20 murders. I've watched friends of mine die in the streets. Murder is something that I know about. My father was murdered. And I think about it. I go to a real evil place. A real evil place. Quickly. The devil takes me over quickly. You wouldn't even recognize me. You won't be able to shake me out of it. So what do you do when you're angry like that? Just wait it out? Go ruin your life, wake up in a prison cell, go get drunk, 
What do you do? I run to God. I pray. I open my Bible or any spiritual book. I have a bunch of them. I'll drop to my knees and start praying in the moment of anger. When I feel like the devil's taken me over, I run to God. Food for thought. Have a good day.